Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Commodities Report and starting with the 10-year uh, yields here. We can look at this as wave 3 here with an A and a B and a C wave here for wave 4. And then we can look at this here as 1 and 2 here and 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, an ABC here for wave 4 here, then wave 5 for wave 3, 4 and 5. So a bit more of a movement uh, to the upside. The flip side of this is that um, when we take a look at the 30-year yields here, it's a bit difficult to look at it as an ABC pattern coming down here. It's, it's a bit short <clears throat> as, a, as an A wave here and ABC for the B wave here and um, and the C wave here. So um, it's possible to look at this more like this over here with one, two, three, four, five up here for the C wave uh, coming into this space and then down for wave four. So coming back over to the 10 year yields here, it is possible for this market to have from this low here, <clears throat> have five waves up here to finish it off at wave five of three, which would be the top of a B wave and then have a C wave down here and so on at that point and bring that wave four over there that would match up with the 30 year yields at this point but in the meantime and over the last weeks and days and so on we've been expecting this to push up and uh it's it's on its way um yeah but so that's where that is at the moment so the us dollar i want to look at it in a bullish way and a bearish way so the bearish ways we've been looking at as <clears throat> wave one coming down wave two and then wave one and wave two here and then down for wave one and uh, five waves down here for wave one, an A and a B and a C for wave two at this point. And then here as it's quite a nice impulse wave as wave one with an A wave, a B wave, and one, two, three, four, and then coming up here for wave five. I haven't pulled that apart here. But <clears throat> if this makes the top out of, if this takes this top out here, then it doesn't necessarily send it, um, bullish because we've also in this move here we've only got what we've got one two three four five here for this and then one two three so it's basically in three waves an a and a b and a c here for this <coughs> so it could be a situation where we have um uh just a larger a b c so we have an a b an a wave here a b wave an a and a b and a c for the b wave here and then this C wave comes over here for a wave two over here. And we build up a bit further here in terms of a five wave structure coming up here. This length here would be roughly the length of one of these um, into that space. So that's also possible. So what we're actually really looking for here is, is a breakdown. We want this to break down so we can look to buy gold. Um, uh, so... Um, so yeah, we need this low here breached at this point, then we can safely buy gold at that point. So if it keeps moving up here like this, then it places a bit of difficulty on buying gold and silver and buying the Australian dollar and those sorts of things. So we may come up, you know, we may break it here and come down and then uh, that would be a good signal, but in, anywhere under here and here would pretty much suffice to to buy gold and silver and the the Australian dollar and so forth. So we may end up coming up here and then we'll have to rework the count a little bit. But if we're going to be more bullish coming up here, I did a bit of work on this. If I go to the 10,000 tick chart here, because it's good to look at both sides of the market. So coming down from the top here, we can look at this as wave one and an A and a B and a C for wave two, then wave one and two, and then one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five for the third wave. So it's quite a nice five wave structure here for wave three, then four, and then five down here, giving us this wave three here. And then the 38.2% retracement level would be this wave four here. So that fits nicely. And then down here for wave five with one and two and three here, then an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave for wave four, and then down for wave five here. And then this over here would make wave one with an ABC expanded flat for wave two, and then wave three, four, and five here for wave A here. And then looking at this as a, um, an A wave, a B wave, and all the way down here for one and two and three, four, five here to finish off for the B wave, and then moving up higher here for wave C of two, which I kind I kind of like all of this count. Um, 
but we'll see. Um, and the 50, 60% retracement levels up here. So the yields need to push up a bit higher. So they might give this time for this to move up here as well. But it does put a bit of a spanner in the works for um, purchasing gold and those sort of things. So we really need to see a breakdown from here to be able to buy gold and silver safe. Well, I would assume so, do you know what I mean? But it doesn't have to be. Uh, we'll take gold and silver on their own merits as well. It's just that all the tops and bottoms, uh, the turns have been so far uh, in sync with uh, the dollar for uh, gold. So it, it has a bit of weight to it on that, on that instance. Okay, so the uh, dollar yen, we've got this here as also five waves down and then having an A and a B and a C wave up here. So in this case, it counts okay. I mean, this counts okay for the A wave, the B wave's fine, wave one is fine. This wave three here is a little bit dodgy. I mean, uh, um, you know, I, I mean, it's the best fit with one, two, three, four, five here. But the fact that that pulled down sharply is more like a wave two scenario, like one and two and one and two, you know, or can you swing it any other way? I'm just sort of thinking it's pretty hard to get this as wave one up here. Doesn't quite fit either. Um, so then this wave one and two and one, two, three, four, five, all of that's fine. So that's a little bit of an issue in, in, in here for this, okay? And then we've got this situation here where we're looking at wave four here. Now I can look at wave four coming down here in five waves, one, two, three, four, five to here, and have that as, you know, an A wave and then an A, B and C for the B wave. And that, so I could put wave this, I could put wave four here on this low here and then look at this as wave one here with an A and a B and a C for wave two and work it up that way. Or we come over here with this as, as a triangle all the way over here for this is the A, the B, the C, the D, the E over here for the for wave four here and then start working it up as one and two and three and four and five. This move down <coughs> here is a bit, um, uh, you know, a, a bit off as well because it can overlap this. But I don't mind a bit of overlap on this because when you're around a large number and this number it's not that large, but it's still got a zero on the end of it. And the market is working to it. So the market is, you know, the orders are being pulled to that number. So, um, and retesting it like that is quite sort of typical because the other way to look at this is one and two and one and two and one and two, which is possible as well. If I had it here as wave four, then we have wave one, two, and three, nice five waves in here for three, four, and five up here. And I'm thinking, well, that could be a possible top at this point. It's still possible that this could be a top here. There's got a bit of an impulse wave correction this down, but it's starting to linger too far over here. And in fact, if this top here goes, this one here, um, then uh, then it's going to be then it's going to be bullish at that point. Now, obviously would need to look at this 145 here as a classic trading levels pattern. So it's had the arrival and it's having the reaction here. So it still need to do that, and that. So just to understand that a bit further, this would be the arrival here. And then it's got some type of correction that will push up and then it's going to come back again at that point. Now that could be a high or we could push up there further and so on, but we don't, I don't know that just yet. So <coughs> um, even if you were trading up here, you'd need to be a little bit careful. If that low stays in place and that low stays in place, then you could look at this as um, probably a bigger degree than this really, but wave one and two here. So you would have three, four, five to the upside. Do you know what I mean? So just keep an eye on on, on that for the moment. So yeah, a bit of a shaggedy sort of count, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think if there's going to be, if it's going to be much more bullish than all of this, then that first high above the level, coming up here, about there somewhere, uh, and then some sort of ABC correction here, then, you know, the next decent trade would be up here at that point. So we'll look for it over here. Be careful about being losing money and getting trapped while we're working around this number. It needs to migrate from being resistance to support, and there's a process for that. And because it acted here, it's telling me that, this is what's going to happen. When it does push up, it will be pulled back. It's not going to keep going straight up. I, you could, it's possible, um, but most of the time it will come back and check it. So um, just be mindful um, of that. Okay, the uh, sterling. So uh, yes, um, 
we were going to go long in this if we could get this 1272 as support. It's popped its head up there, but it's not support yet. But we're going to stick to the same story, and it does appear that we've got some type of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up here, a little bit scruffy in here, but it's not sitting on that number just yet. So it could also pull back a bit before it pushes up again as well. Uh, so just be a little bit mindful um, of that. Um, <clears throat> but that's where we are for the sterling at this point. So, yeah, it's not um, not not moving much, but uh, the US have been on holidays and they're back now. And the euro dollar here. So I was looking at this being pushing up for uh, wave one, and then an A and a B and a C for wave two here. Uh, and then up for one here, we had a nice impulse wave coming into play here. So that was good. Um, but um, yeah, now we've got this extra little high in here. Just, it's not a lot. Um, so it could make this corrective, do you know what I mean? It could make this um, here as an A wave now, a B, because it took the low out here. This one here came down and took the low. So it could make this an A and a B and a C wave here for this. And then we come down further at this point. So we'll have to expand this wave two up here, which I don't particularly like doing. The wave two at the moment is, is a nice size for uh, for this move up here. So coming down here further, but if it does, it does. Um, we talked about going long above here, then we're coming down, we can go here, but we'll just put it, you'll need a cl little classic trading level pattern on the nine there. You know, you would have had, you know, last night we would have had the first high here and the second high, but we didn't, we wouldn't have gotten triggered into that. So uh, it does look a bit impulsive at this point. So one and two and one, two, three, four, five, a bounce off the bottom here somewhere and so on and back down into 108 here. So we'll see what it looks like at that point and we'll see where the US dollar is. Um, we'll see, you know, the, the US dollar might, um, you know, drop from where it is. <clears throat> and it may not. So we just got to figure that out and let it just let it play out for a little bit and then we'll pick up the thread before we start surfing anything. Okay, the Australian uh, dollar as well. It's uh, we've got wave two here with wave one here, an A and a B and a C for wave two, calling that low in a while ago and looking for five waves up here. So we can go long above that top here now. So I don't want to buy back in the box here because um, this wave two was really quite big here. And we could view this as wave one and two here and wave three here and wave four and then go down for wave five. And then this over here would become the A wave, the B wave, one and two and three, four and five up here as a corrective move. So we're not out of the woods just yet. We still need that dollar to US dollar to collapse from basically where it is. And it may do that. If it does do that, then it's going to trigger the Australian dollar into play and the euro and also gold as well. So with gold here, we talked about a possible low being in place. It's a bit dodgy with all of this, but <coughs> silver's got a better case and uh, the others, but it's not set in stone. That was the point. So what we wanted to do was wanted to wait for an impulse wave up here. So we could look at uh, this being an impulse wave. It's not the best looking wave there. I can see that you could also justify it as being corrective as well, but that's okay because all we wanted to do was to see it move up, um, hit this trend line here and this level and, and at the, at the uh, top of minor group, uh, subgroup one here of minor 1900 here. And then we can go long above this top here. It's that simple because it's like, don't go jumping the gun and buying it back here because you may get trapped. It may get something like this and we come down and make a new low here. But this is what we've been waiting for. Um, it's not the best five waves up here. And in fact, it counts better as being a corrective pattern as an A wave, a B wave, one and two and three, uh, ABC for four here and up for five in that sense. So it can fit that model quite easily and come down. It'll also depend on the US dollar as well. So we need that they'll all just, they'll, there's nothing to, nothing to buy or sell. And then there'll be everything to, to, to buy. And it's the same with um, GDX here as well. We can view this as wave one to the upside and uh, as, as an ABC back down here. And, uh, but it's not set in stone. It's also not the best looking 
uh, structure here as well for this. And this can also get a bit more lopsided here as well before going up. So we may get a better um, purchase price for this as well. Even if, it, I mean, it may, it may or may not even get triggered at this point. So, you know, this, like I said, there's a good case for this being an A and a B and one, two, three, four, five up here for this and actually coming down further. And, you know, that can be certainly, certainly be the case, um, you know, depending on the dollar. So that'll bring us down even further at that point. So we're not, we're not there yet. We want that level to become the tested support. That's what we're looking for. And if we do get a B wave in here, then we can bring it down to here. And then if that's the case, we might be able to get it down even here further. We just got to go step by step. But um, yeah, like I said, the uh, US dollar is not looking that fantastic to support buying gold at the moment it's not it's not in place so but it might be into the last minute this is silver here so we're expecting a move up in silver here so i'm just going to remove that and that really needs to go on the top there but we'll just double check that as well um in fact i'll just move that because what i was looking for here is that the 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 bearish side of the market here <clears throat> okay let's just do it if we're going to go long you want to spend more time on the bearish side than the than the other side in times of peace prepare for war and vice versa so basically if you're going to go long you really want to study the bearish side of the market so we can look at this as the a the b wave here then one and two and three four five here for the c wave here now if this goes up here, we're still not going to go long on this because it will probably, you know, come back here anyway. Um, and, yeah, so I really should just have a bit of a... Let's just go in and have a bit of a look at this, shall we? That's um, 5,000 ticks, so let's just go into 20 ticks here. Let's get a bit more... I mean, if that's the low, these could be ones and twos here. If that's broken that low, so that would have to be one. And yeah, it's not even that nice looking, is it? That's all a bit of an issue there. <clears throat> I'm just wondering if this is a fourth wave and there's, you know, one, two, three, four, five to go. I mean, the thing is <coughs> here, what I can see is that you see how this this move up here is in five waves and it's taken that that B wave out, it's left this here as a corrective ABC pattern. So we should be taking the top out, but uh, probably one and two uh, here. I don't know if that's the ABC right to that point there, but we should get three, four, five. So we could go up a little bit further in this. I mean, it could be bullish and we miss out. That's the other thing. <clears throat> I mean, it is on top of group 23 here. That's not, I mean, normally I'd be going long on this number because it's the top of group one and then i'd also be looking at um the next the smaller levels up here will be 10 20 and 30 at that point looking for support there because if i get support on this number this 30 then i know that the market's leaving this number and being pulled to this number that's where it changes here that's where it gets pulled you'll see that in the market depth if you've been doing day trading long enough um, so yeah, it looks a little bit sort of bullish there, but um, you know, if I had a nice clean five waves straight up here, I mean, I could probably, I mean, obviously that's the third wave and we can look at that as a fourth and a fifth wave here and we could probably tie this into one and two and three and four and five. So we could tie in all of this, but the question is what's, what is this? You know, is it is it actually part of this other move down here as three ABC for four and down for five? I think it might be, you know, just, just a little bit truncated. You know, when you start looking at things that, I mean, you get a lot of fantastic detail on, you know, when you go down into, you know, five ticks and ten ticks and so on. It does look corrective, doesn't it? And that looks, it just hasn't made a new low at that point. I've got to clean this up here before I head on. So we're back at 20K here. So 20K. 
we don't want 20k in here, we just want 200. Oh, we were on 5k, were we? Um, so, yes, it does look like it wants to push up further. I'm just going to leave it for another session. I'm not going to call it in just yet. I'm going to put that up there a little bit higher because basically if this is going to be an A and a B and a C wave here with five waves in it, once it finishes here, it's got to pull back. Um, then we can go along at that point. That's basically what I was looking at. Um, that's a little bit further at the back of going crazy. Um, Sulfur crested cockatoos, big white birds with the yellow crest. Um, so, um, yeah, because once we get past this, then then we're good to go. Do you know what I mean? That's the thing. That's what I've been looking for because I couldn't go long here based on even if that was five waves or not, um, which, it, which it is. Um, it's one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, five. It's nice and the ABC. So, um, and the other thing here is that what we were doing here is we're originally looking, looking at this as one and two here and then three and four and five here. That's how I'm sort of looking at it. But even with wave four here, it's starting to overlap wave one here. So the bullish case is quite strong. Um, we just don't have the dollar on our side. You know, if you wanted to go a small position here, um, you know, I'll leave that up to you at that point. It's not not strong enough for me to put a trade out on, on it at this point. Um, but yeah, it does count quite nicely as one, two, three, three, four, five, here for third, fourth and fifth with all of that. So having a low in place for uh, silver is <clears throat> is quite quite probable at this stage, but I just can't confirm it. I, you know, it's been or you know it's been for days and, and weeks trying to get this into play. You know, but I don't want to <clears throat> I don't want to sort of like just get sucked in at the, at the last second. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I've been a sucker too long in my life. <laughs> Still, it makes you a good loser. That's the good thing about the markets. It gives you good lessons in life. Um, so uh, iron ore. So, yeah, it's looking quite bullish. So I'm going to look at the um, iron ore on uh, at Singapore here because it's just a better a better count. So, so with this here, we're looking down at one, two, three, four, five, basically for the A wave, the B wave and the C wave here, because on China, it doesn't take out this low here on the A wave. But um, but we know China can be sort of, you know, manipulated a, a bit. You know, they're always telling porky pies about their figures, you know, so um, and trying to do things to get their own way. Um, I mean, it's just business. I mean, you know. I mean, the Chinese like doing business, don't they? I mean, even, I mean, right from the gold days where America was discovering gold and Australia was discovering gold, um, you know, they just like doing business, you know. That's why I like them. It's just, they're just nice people. Um, so, yeah, this is an ABC. We counted up for wave one and then an ABC back here. It's a little bit dodgy, this top here. You know, with this top here, there is the case to put five waves down here. That's why I was waiting to get the next five waves up here. A bit like what we're doing with gold, really. Uh, in it's slightly different, but same sort of concept. So we had here a one and two and uh, three, four, five up here. So all I need to do is... We're looking at this as an ABC pattern here. So all we really need to do is take out this top here, and then that would confirm that we've got wave one ABC for two and going up at that point, you know. Um, so it's possible to put this wave two here. It may come down here a bit further, all of those sorts of things. <clears throat> um, it is looking quite good, um, but it's just not confirmed just yet. So we'll just keep working working with it. I could go to the 15 minute chart or five minute chart and do it, but um, I just want to see a little bit more here. It could certainly drop a little, the space for it to drop uh, in, in here for this uh, wave two. We can put it here. 
we could put it just over here a little bit, uh, all of those sorts of things. Um, we're not seeing any increased volume coming in here for, for that, so it's possible for it to, to, to pull down a bit further. So we'll just keep an eye on it. But that top there, that's the trigger to basically buy um, uh, Vail, Rio, FMG, all of those sorts of uh, <clears throat> stocks. Okay, then we're going to go over to Copper. I'll just go here actually. So it's the same thing here as well, um, the copper futures. So we were looking at this being a low in place with a five wave move here. Now the five wave move here is not is not perfect and you could probably look at it as an A wave, a B wave, one, two, three, four, five here, but there's a lot of overlap in here. Um, so I was just waiting for this to finish off here and here. Um, let's just go to maybe, I'll just try the 15 minute chart here. We have something here, we've got something here. We Oh, that's right, yes, we could count it. I could see that on the daily. It could count down as five waves here. So this is, it's not looking that fantastic for, um, for, for this at the moment. So we just have to wait on this as well here. It looks a little bit bearish. This is, uh, to see what it gets to up here. I mean, it will push up. We'll get this. This is, um, <clears throat> this is like a little one and two here and three, four, five. So I'll have to get past this point. That's the problem right here based on that five wave structure here. So I thought it was looking a bit bullish, but it's not. And that leaves us with, <clears throat> I'll just have a look on this other chart here. Yeah, so on this copper chart here, I've got the five waves up here, but I don't trust myself on these five waves because there's overlaps in here, you know? So it, it, I'm not putting too much weight on that being wave one, you know. <clears throat> but in this instance here, I could come back here and look at this as the A, the B, and the C wave down here for this, for wave two. So in this on this chart, um, this is high-grade US copper, um, it works okay. And then <clears throat> I was looking up here as, as one and two, and one and two, and one, two, three, four, five for the third, fourth, and I was thinking that all must be part of the same one here because it would otherwise overlap too much here. So one and two and three, four and one, two, three, four, five. And yes, there's overlap in here, but you just have to be a big boy about it and, and uh, take it. It's, it's the best fit, you know. Um, and that's, you know, this is a big number, not because it's got plenty of just the fact that it's number eight. And <clears throat> So I could look at this as an A and a B and a C wave down here. And this looks impulsive up here, doesn't it? One, two, three, four, five. So in this case, like the other market, we're going to see three, four, and five up here. So you can trade long, and you could probably bring that down into here somewhere to trade long. But we'll need to be mindful that um, that this is not some sort of, um, not that one, this one. Not some sort of um, ABC correction coming up here. So, so the good news is you can trade it long, but the bad news is that we can't trade it long for a long time because we need to get past. Um, we need to get past a few things. But anyway, that's sort of where we're at with it at the moment. That's copper, and then we come to nickel. We're expecting nickel to bounce off the twenty, and it's bouncing quite quite well we don't have uh, <clears throat> we don't have five waves up here just yet so um, it, like I said we probably will um, but so we can see that it's playing out at the 23.6 we we're at the 38.2 we can see that it's got one two three four five here so it's going to play out here it's going to play out at the 50 and then the 61.8 percent because it's got some history over here with that so just be mindful of that. We've got uh, 21, 22, 23. So 20, um, the 21,500 is also going to be important in this case. So <clears throat> I just want to see if we get five waves up here. Um, 
we probably look at this as one and two, one and two. Like I said, you could buy it off this level. That's not, not a problem because it will go further up. It's just, um, you know, to call it, the trouble with this is that it hasn't made a new low below here. So I think it's still part of, um, so if I just go back and have a look at nickel in another space here, <clears throat> um, Vale, this is the nickel one here. So if I look at um, this one, yeah. So even this one here as, as an A wave, a B wave and a C wave down here, <clears throat> then um, it hasn't really made a low here. It's difficult to call this wave one here, by the way, and wave two over here just doesn't add up. So We've got a nice third wave coming down and a fourth and we've got one, two, three, four, five here. You can see that. So that's that's nice at that point. Um, so it's probably a wave four that we're going back to at this point. <clears throat> uh, and then we'll have another wave. So I think it's something like that to here and then to here and then we go up at that point. Now, if we if I've made a mistake and we're not going to make a new low down here, then the mistake will be that I will need to put this wave two here as wave one here. I'll need to put this wave two over to this side here and look at this as an A wave, a B wave and a C wave. So I put the question mark there because it, it means that I need, if that was going to be the case, I'll need to go back in and, and check all of that. So we could have a low in here. If that was the case, then this wave two would need to, um, would need to go over here for that. So I just want to see, we'll probably push back up to, you know, up to these previous highs here. Okay, so it does give, we've been looking at IGO here. IGO was one of the stocks uh, in Australia that was quite chirpy. So we could look at this, well, there's a couple of different ways to look at all of this really, but um, in the bigger picture, but uh, I'll just stay here. We'll look also at one of the counts we're looking at. We're putting wave because I could put wave, I could put this wave five here and that'll be the top. But because we've got three waves here, we're going to look at this being one and two and then going up for three, four, five up here. And then we looked at this being one and two and three and four and five and then wave two here. And then we've been looking with this here. So basically in a nutshell, this particular level here, the 15 um, here, it's you have to ask yourself, is it support yet? You know, just because it trades above, it doesn't mean that it's support. It needs to establish itself and then take out new highs. So it's kind of done that here a little bit, but this move here will be one, two, three, four, five here. So this will also be um, coming into here will be wave one here and two, three, four, five here for this wave three up here for that. Um, it may not be that long, and I've probably exaggerated as I normally do. Um, but, um, yeah, you get the picture, something of that sort of nature. So if we go to the 15-minute chart here and just have a bit of a look at this in here. So what only this is the one and the two here. Um, that's cool, that's all righty. Don't need that ABC there, it's just noise. Um, and this one, two, three, four, five here. Um, so what have I done here? I need to take that off. Uh, I need to take it off that one, put that there. And then what I'll need to do here is push this. Oh, I could just do it this way. I just could just go um, drop that down a notch. So that will be the first five waves up there for that. And let's just put that there and that there. And, and then we just change this back to this one. So, yeah, and this here looks like it's maybe one and two or one and two or all of one and two, some sort of third wave here. So we're going to see that pop up here. There might be two little moves up here to get that, but then we're going to get some sort of ABC to move up here. So we'll keep a bit of an eye on it because we can buy it back at this point, you know. Uh, we can just get... Um, You don't want to buy it just yet because it's going to come back. So it'll come up here somewhere. You just have to do some work on that, but it's kind of there. I mean, 
it doesn't really matter if you think it's going to keep on going, which it could do. It could be one and two and one and two here and keep building to the upside. We miss it and it doesn't come back because that, that kind of thing happens, you know. Um, so maybe it's a good idea to split the bet up, you know, put um, copy this here, clone this again <laughs> and put this here and uh, can we get that on a thinner line? Yeah, we'll just get a better a nicer green as well sorry about that it's just i have to look at it too um so this way we get you get some over here and we just push this up here and then that way you just split the bed a bit you know and then one bit back over here and then we can just build over this side here this will move off quite quickly because it's be the third of the third here so anyway uh, that's all going quite good and um let's cruise along so that's nickel. We don't need to talk about that. Uh, this is lithium here. Well, it's not really lithium. It's, you know, it's an ETF on that. But uh, yeah, it's triggering to go along here. But I can say that this is a little one, two in here and a three here. So there'll be some sort of move up and then there'll be a move back to check the gap, maybe check the level at least anyway, uh, and then push up again. So uh, as one, two, three, four overlap, probably not one, two, one, two, maybe a bit better. Um, it should be pushing up, but it's the tech stocks that are pushing this up because there's only that one and that one that are, that I can see that are um, got any lithium in, in there at this point. But anyway, we've been sort of looking at that. Um, but the other main point with the lithium, if we go back to, to lithium here somewhere, lithium stocks, it's these two here, the big Chinese stocks that... Um, <clears throat> that I wanted to get, this is just a 15 minute, I wanted to take this low out here and then see an impulse. We haven't really done that yet, but the spike might not be that important. What about this one? Uh, this one's down a bit further, that's good. <clears throat> I mean, it can be down for one, two, meh, three, four, meh, I'm sort of pushing it there, Pete. Anyway, we're not still not seeing any impulse waves to the upside uh, here just yet on, on these stock, on, on these, you know, because I, I want to see, um, because these these particular companies, um, you know, own own other lithium smaller stocks uh, around the planet. So, um, you know, I'm not seeing that demand. You can see how this is pretty much, I could probably get five waves out of that one, but this one here was a bit more definite, wasn't it? It was more of a three-wave move. So I'm still waiting for this low to be taken out here. So either that low gets taken out or we see some impulsive uh, fractal, fractal patterns over here that can convince me that we've got impulse waves pushing up at that point. Then these other US ones, then they will go, um, they'll go at the same time as well. They'll all go together at that point. I was hoping for a lower, you know, a lower US dollar to help trigger that um, because a lower US dollar will help China restock as well. Well, that's my theory. Um, Rightio, so that's that's uh, lithium. Then we come over to the energy sector. I won't go into a big spiel here, but you basically know that I was looking for basically five waves up here and then a move down at that point. So there's no change in that in in that particular. Thing. And we were counting this up as one, two, three here, an A and a B and a C expanded flat. Then one, two, three, four, five, bit dodgy in here. You could probably make that a bit better with one, two. Yeah, you could do a better job than that in there, but it doesn't really matter. But that's what large numbers do. They can skew the count. You know, they can pull the market to to it. So you need to be a little bit philosophical about that. Uh, we talked about going long here. I should have brought that down to the wave B over there, but maybe I had a reason. I can't remember. I wasn't there, Your Honour. Um, so, yeah, anyway, that seems to be sort of heading in the right direction. Um, there's plenty of resistance at, at 72 and 73, so it's going to be a bit of a hard slog. Um, I wouldn't sort of overtrade on on this, but it's, um, you know, it, we should be getting the other side of this because this move here, for example, that's the top, this move here is corrective. Right, so that means we should be taking out the A wave here. That's why that is there. So a move to seven five would be realistic um, for for for, uh, for for crude at this point. And then we come over to life's a gas, and um, so 
in this picture here, we've got this one, two, three, four, five here. Now that could be um, an impulse wave and be wave one, basically, or put wave one here and be bullish, you know, and come back for wave two here, so to speak, <clears throat> and then push up. So I don't know that, or it can come down into more of a bearish case down here. So what we're going to do, <clears throat> we waited for the first, um, the first move down. <clears throat> that can be wave A or wave 1, and then we're waiting for the B wave. That came in when we had a little five waves coming down here, so we could put that from up here down to here. Now we can put this over to here, uh, because this is probably 1 and 2 and coming into wave, wave 3, 4, 5 here. So we could just, I'll just take these here, I don't need those. And we can look for, the, you can work out, you know, 1 and 2 and yada, yada, yada. So uh, 3, 4, 5 down here for wave c of two but we don't know that it may not be wave two here just yet you know um we could come down further but if we get the five waves down here and then we start seeing impulse waves coming up here well then we'll start building in long trades uh with all of this because the bigger picture here if we go back to the 50k and look at the bigger picture here this is the you know basically a daily chart um so basically this is the um the issue here is that um, from the top, we can look at it as an A wave, a B wave, and then one, two, three, four, five down here for the C wave, and that's the low in there. And then in some way or another, we can configure this here as wave one and two, one and two, or wave one here and wave two putting over here with an expanded flat as wave two. So we could look view it like that, being bullish, but at the same time, we could look at this as one and two here, and this being what this C wave is wave three, and then having a look at wave four over here as some sort of A wave, A, B, C for the B wave and up to the C wave here. Well, that's already got five waves in it. So yeah, that could be a top in there already. Um, so there's a few things going on here. So yeah, I just wanted to wait for it to show us what it is really, you know, so no point in moving in if you don't know, uh, but if you know, obviously do what you need to do, but I don't. So um, I'll just wait until I do. Alrighty. Um, thanks for tuning in. Sorry for such a long video. Cheers.